sector uh, because again, there's just, uh, it's gonna be a really competitive uh, room in terms of earning reps uh, at those positions. Uh, you know, Braxton, as we know, has played good football for us uh, for a number of years, but uh, the rest of the guys are, are inexperienced. So uh, Andy's just one of those guys. I, I would, uh, the way we rotate them because of the, the way that the racks are set up at practice, I mean, I'm just warning you not, not to get uh, too consumed, uh, especially in some of those positions where there's, uh, that are, have more bodies. Uh, so I wouldn't get consumed with who's going with who uh, at those spots, but uh, just trying to get them reps. That's all. Okay. Um, J. Michael Sturdivant's a guy that uh, everybody was pretty excited about when he came in. Uh, looked like he had a little bit of an adjustment period with his hands and stuff last year, but like a lot of freshmen do, it looks like he's been super confident and consistent so far this spring. Can you give me some thoughts on him? Yeah, he's had a, a strong start to spring uh, the first four days, and, and J. Mike has some some great tools to work with, and he uh, had a, a really good off season. So uh, he just he needs a lot of he just needs practice. You know, he's a young guy, uh, limited experience at the college level, and he's definitely gotten better from uh, last fall, which is exciting to see because he can he can just do some things that not many guys can do in terms of his speed and how tall and long he is, and uh, he made a couple really nice contested catches so far this spring. And Tommy Kostakis is a guy that's been flashing a lot this spring, too. Is he healthy? And what do you, do you see out of him? Yep, so far. And I think that's uh, one of the things that we've talked to Tommy about. When he's been healthy and available, I mean, Tommy can make some really nice plays. And uh, he's a tough matchup for the defense because of his size. And he can run. And he's got really, really uh, great coordination in terms of being able to high point the ball and keep it away from his body and use his body to uh, shield people. So Tommy is a talented guy. And uh, he's, you know, so far this spring is, is feeling good and, and is strong. So just got to stay on that course. Thanks. Okay, we'll go to Jeff Frado. Go ahead, Jeff. Justin, can you uh, give us a sense of your, you know, what you're seeing in Jeremiah Hunter? He obviously did some really good things for you last year, had some injuries and didn't get to play the whole season. But how has he progressed this year and what do you expect from him? Well, he he's always been a really hardworking guy, very eager um, you know, he's a, a great teammate and a great guy to be around just because he loves, he loves football. He loves being a part of the team. He works. And I think it's just been, he's had some, uh, as you mentioned, he's had some, some injuries that have slowed him down, down at times and kept him off the field. But as he continues to grow physically and, uh, become, uh, you know, just bigger, stronger and been able, you know, being able to, uh, withstand the wear and tear of playing college football. I mean, he can do some some special things at the receiver position. So uh, we love what he's doing and he's growing uh, both, you know, physically and as a, a college receiver. And I think the really the sky's the limit for him. He just got to kind of, again, stay on this same path where he gets these reps in practice and continues to build his body in the weight room. And uh, he's got a very bright future. It's only been four spring practices. You're not even, you know, hitting each other really yet too much, but can you give us an update on how the quarterback, uh, competition is evolving it looks like Jack and Kai are getting most of the reps but um how do you see that yeah I think they're all the guys are doing uh doing well I think they're all improving as we would hope and expect that they would um we're continuing to you know create reps whether it's obviously it's seven on seven and team but also I mean everything from routes on air to one-on-ones to half line seven on uh, just a lot of different throws for all those guys to make sure they get opportunities to throw the ball. And uh, that's part of it. And then also just mastery of the offense and, and being comfortable in the huddle, comfortable at the line of scrimmage, comfortable with the cadence, uh, directing traffic when they need to. I think there's just a lot to it. Uh, and we're you know mindful that we need to evaluate uh, a number of guys, but we're uh, you know, I pleased with the, the growth they've made in four practices, but we got to keep that going. I mean, we need that uh, endurance from day to day and week to week. And I think those guys all have the right mentality to keep improving throughout spring, which is what we're looking for. Well, as much as there may be an urgency to keep improving, it sounds like really no urgency from your standpoint on when to name a starter. Not really. I think it just needs to, uh, <clears throat> it needs to happen organically. I mean, we, you know, if we put a, a timestamp on it that might be dangerous for the growth of the, you know, the individual players, the offense, the program, we're just uh, concerned with them improving and uh, it'll sort itself out. And 
you know, it's not uh, realistic to think every guy is going to get the same number of reps, but we're going to make sure they all get evaluated properly. We're going to talk to Femi in a few minutes, I think. And um, when you and I talked the other day, this inside linebacker is a really deep position for you guys. Can you talk about how those guys are playing and specifically what's Femi showing you right now where he's taking a step maybe from last year? Yeah, he, you know, it is a deep group. And I think you asked the question last week, Jeff, about uh, are there guys in that room that have the potential to play other positions? And I would say that there absolutely are. And we'll evaluate that really uh, each week during spring football. Uh, speaking specifically about Femi, I mean, Femi, since he's been here, uh, since he got here uh, fresh, you know, as a freshman, his uh, demeanor, first and foremost, is uh, very, very impressive. I mean, he is a uh, he is a leader by nature. I mean, just his the way he approaches everything, whether it's meetings, practice, workouts, his life off the field, he just has a very special way about him. Um, and then on top of that, the physical tools that Femi has. I mean, he is a big physical guy. He loves contact. He loves football. And he, uh, I think he's just going to get better and better the more he plays. And he played really good for us as a young guy last year. And I think he's just got a, a very high ceiling and he's got the demeanor uh, and the attitude that you're looking for at that position and just as a football player in general. So we uh, have very high hopes for Femi. And I, and I think I know that he has very, very high expectations for himself and his teammates. It looks like he's added maybe 10 pounds since last season. Is he one of the guys who is not likely to be moved? He, he's going to stay inside. Uh, yeah, we, you know, he, there are certain things that we do with those inside backers on from call to call where they could line up on the perimeter. Um, I think Femi probably could do it right now. We're really focused at keeping Femi at inside linebacker. We feel like he has the, uh, the ability. And again, the, the instinct and the demeanor to be a uh, very, very good uh, inside linebacker. Um, and I think there are some other guys in that room that could potentially move, but as I mentioned to you last week, uh, we're going to kind of take it week by week here and see what we need to do for the, uh, you know, in the best interest of the team. So, yeah. Thanks, Justin. Yep. Okay. We'll go to Steve Croner from the San Francisco Chronicle. Yeah, hey, Justin, how are you doing? I'm well, how are you, Steve? Doing fine. Thank you. Hey, uh, kind of following up on Jeff, you mentioned you don't want to timestamp you know, when the quarterback uh, starting role decision is made, would you feel comfortable then going into summer camp without having named a starter? Or would you prefer by the end of this month to say, this guy is our guy? Yeah, maybe what's preference, my preference versus practicality might be two different things. I think, yeah. you know, you uh, sure, it'd be great if there was, it became obvious yesterday it's not right now and that's okay I mean I, we're not the first team or the only team that this that is in this situation where it's a competitive uh environment at that position and I know it generates a ton of interest and that's deservedly so but I think uh again it needs to reveal itself with reps and uh production at that position and uh, we, we feel good about those guys and the steps they've taken in spring but again I, I think putting a time stamp on it might uh, paint yourself into a corner a little bit. You know, there will be a time when it needs to happen, uh, but we're just not up against that yet. And I don't really want to put a date on it. Fair enough. If you could just maybe uh, talk about the strengths of each of the two guys who apparently are getting the most reps, the strengths of Kai and the strengths of Jack. Yeah, Jack uh, has experience, which uh, is tough to replicate, you know, in practice. So he has game experience at, at this level of football and he's played good football. He can throw the ball. He's tall. He sees things well. I think he's uh, got a he's a football guy um, in terms of the way he approaches meetings. Uh, he's you know, he he handles himself like a QB. You know, he's very much into football and likes to study it. And so, uh, you know, all those things, uh, those are great qualities. And then Kai, who's a, a bit younger, has less experience. Um, but Kai is a talented guy I mean, he can really spin the ball a very productive high school player, as we know, also loves football. I mean, he is a kind of a junkie like those other guys. That's what you want at that position. You know, it's uh, tough to play great uh, at quarterback if you're not a football junkie. And, and those guys, as do the other guys in the room, all have that quality. You know, they're, they're very much into the X's and O's and they want to know the why. And 
curious about learning and uh, very motivated that way. So um, I think they're, they're different styles of uh, players and that's okay, but uh, both uh, very talented in, in the, at the same time and uh, excited they're both on our team. Fair enough, thank you. Okay, we'll go to Jim McGill. Go ahead, Jim. Um, talking about Kai and Jack, are they able to effectively make throws consistently at, at all three levels? Yeah. And I think they're always, you know, everybody's always looking to improve in the past game. And uh, those guys are doing the same, but I think they have the ability to throw it down the field. They've shown that uh, they've had, uh, they've shown the ability to throw the intermediate in breaking and out breaking routes. And then, in college football, and, and we need to as well be able to get the ball out quick and accurately, whether it's, uh, you know, on the perimeter, whether it's quick game slants and hitches or, or bubbles, and be able to get the snap either from under center or in the gun and get it out quickly and accurately on the perimeter. Because in college football, that's a big part of the game, and they've both shown the ability to do that. And then it's about repetition and uh, being able to do it over and over and over again. And within the you know, within a drive or within a game. And so some of those things, we just got to, there's really no substitute for practice and reps. And we got to continue to do that and put them in those situations so we can continue to evaluate them. There doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, pass pressure drill type situations on the seven on seven and 11 on 11 to get a good read on it. But do you have much of a sense for how they are with their progressions? I think they're, again, constantly improving. They're, they're going to tell you the same thing. There's always things that they can do better in terms of their progressions. But I, uh, there's certainly a good feel for the offense. They know where to go. And if they make one, one good thing about that entire room that I really like is, you know, they, they don't tend to make the same mistake twice. And that's what you're looking for at, at every position is that when they make a mistake, they're able to learn from it and not make the same one multiple times. You know, we kind of always talk about, Hey, it's, it's good to make mistakes, but let's make a new one. And so we can correct that one and then make another one. We can uh, correct that one. And, and they've done a good job of, I think, uh, eliminating re repetitive mistakes and especially at that position, that's, that's key. But, uh, as I mentioned before, we're looking, we're looking for that from, from all of our players. And last question, um, pardon me if you addressed this earlier, um, in the week last week, but can you give us a little bit of a health update when some of the guys that are out are expected back or if they're out all spring? Uh, yeah. So we announced last week, the guys that would be out all spring. I don't have that in front of me right now. Um, is there anybody specific you're curious about? I mean, I could, we could send gamble. that again. Driscoll and Gamble, are they likely to be out all spring? Uh, yes, uh, Driscoll and Gamble will be out all spring. Um, again, we can send that to you. I, I don't have it in front of me. So. I'll, I'll get the list for them, Coach. Yeah. Yeah, no so every, there's a list of guys that are going to be out all spring, and everybody else uh, is going to be doing something during spring and at – uh, maybe different levels, but everybody else will be involved in spring spring ball to some degree. Thanks. Okay, looks like Jeff has another question. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, you had told us last week, I believe, that Wednesday was going to be your first fully padded practice. Is that still the case? And and what do you what do you expect to learn from that that you can't see up until then? Well, uh, we are going pads on Wednesday, and I think it's a chance for you know they're eager to to get into pads. Um, you know, to be honest with you, Jeff, most of the shells practices um, are going to be real similar uh, in terms of what we do between shells and pads. There's, there's no live in, in shells, obviously without having the, the lowers on, but um, we will do a, a number of the same type of drills, but we might include uh, we will include some tackling. It won't be in a team setting, but we'll include some tackling. We'll work some cut drills, both on offense and defense. Uh, and they need to get used to playing with their pads on. So I think uh, it wouldn't look significantly different uh, in terms of what we're going to do at practice, other than a, a, a few specific drills and getting used to playing with the pads. So until you get to actual scrimmaging 11 on 11, it's not like you can tell, say, for instance, how the quarterback might respond to pressure or, or, or whatever. Yeah, because, I mean, we're doing some of that now with uh, the teamwork. I mean, we have pressures in on defense. We got some uh, normal down and distance uh, blitz work in uh, during those team periods. So it's not like it's been uh, just four-man rush and drop eight. They've had to identify and uh, get the ball out, uh, you know, at the appropriate time. So I think we're, we're getting really good evaluations on that now, and it will just continue to grow the more reps we get throughout spring. It sounds like you think the guys are going to be – pretty fired up for Wednesday and 
yeah. be able to really get it on. Yeah, and they've been fired up since we started, uh, Jeff. I mean, we've had to slow them down a few times during these uh, teen periods and seven on seven, which is a good thing. It's much, uh, you know, it's much better to have to slow them down than speed them up. So, gotcha. Thanks. Yep. Okay, anybody else with the final question for Coach? Looks like Jim McGill has one more. Go ahead, Jim. I just wanted to ask if any of the defensive linemen that had the high school offensive line experience might get a look to add some depth there, like Jaden Roberts or anybody else. Not right now. Um, you know, we know that there are guys that have had that background and probably could make that transition. Uh, you know, with the offensive line, the numbers are thin in, in spring ball now as we sit, but there are going to be a number of guys that uh, – are, are back and healthy for fall camp. And um, there are a couple other things, you know, that could happen between now and fall that change the, the look of that room. So great. Thanks. Okay. I think we're good for today. Thanks a lot, coach. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, thanks Justin.